episode two here with Mitchell Mulcahy. So Mitch is going to be a regular guest on the pod. At least I hope so. Um, but anyway, Mitch and I go way, way back. I mean, I think I was third grade and you would have been, geez, sixth, sixth or something like that when I rolled yep. into Syracuse. Yep. Sweet, yeah. sweet. And your so, sister came in the grade. So, I mean, I knew, I remember that because it was like, oh, he's got, yeah, the whole family moving into town when you're in small town Nebraska, like you were saying in your last episode that, uh, you know, pretty much everything about people. So yep. <laughs> it's funny you bring up with your Steph sister because <laughs> I was trying to think of, you know, some of those first memories and stuff of like when I moved to Syracuse and stuff and you brought up my sister right away. And I didn't know if I was going to say this or not, but I remember meeting you, you rolled up on your bike. Um, for those of you that don't know, Mitch and uh, well, his dad and my dad uh, coached us in basketball um, and junior high football and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, so that was my connection with Mitch. He rolled up to my house on his bike, got to meet him. Uh, and that was the first person I ever met. And then come to find out about a week later, Steph comes home from school track. No, it would have been cross country practice and you had football practice. I think the cross country team was jogging by and she said that you threw a dead squirrel at her. And I think you traumatized her for the rest of her life because I'm like, well, <laughs> I said, that's my buddy. I said, well, he can throw a dead squirrel at whoever he wants. That's my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Do you have man. any recollection at all of that at all? Oh my gosh, no. That's a that's a long time ago, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, Steph still holds it holds it yeah. near and dear to her heart, I'm sure. So, Ugh. anyway, yeah, hopefully, okay. Hopefully so she's okay around school. <laughs> uh, so Mitchell's dad is a coach. Uh, he's the son of a coach. I'm the son of a coach. So the name Coach's Kid here. Um, I was trying to think also, um, like other than my dad, your dad has to be one of my favorite coaches of all time. Like I was trying to think of how, I, how to describe your dad, but the only way I could think about it was like a mixture of Ted Lasso meets Worcester, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I don't know about that. I just remember with him with you he has like i don't know not necessarily slogans but just sayings with each person like kind of in connection and with you he was always just saying he'd always say scoot back and he'd say wmba meaning like like just scoot back and shoot from wherever you wanted like when you open when you came in the gym your range was there so <laughs> I, yeah i remember him telling you just saying it, wmba yeah i remember yeah. that too so that would have been yeah my freshman year i'd play in jv basketball and if I'd miss a couple shots or whatever, you know, he no, normally a coach would be like, all right, it's time to stop shooting. Your dad would be like, MJ, scoop back a little further, scoop back. <laughs> oh, I loved it. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I remember going over to your house, um, just last Paul story. And on the weekends, he would make pancakes. And you know where I'm going with this? And oh, he, yeah. yeah. He would take the raw, hard noodles and he would break them up like without us knowing or maybe you knew i didn't know and he would put them in the pancake batter or at least he did this once and he told us that he put nails in our pancakes to make us tougher yeah dude that's the, I, you would think i would be tougher than i am today because of that but the old nail trick didn't really work with me <laughs> uh, but i did funny. eat pancakes with nails yeah for sure yeah i'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna start busting that out a little bit more often. I think it's just it's a hot dad trick, man. Especially when you have friends over, they don't know. Well, that's the thing. I mean, now that we're dads, it's like that's a, the <laughs> ultimate dad joke right there. Yeah, put nails. Yeah, in right. Pancake. Definitely. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so yeah, that was. I mean, that's our whole Syracuse in a nutshell, right there. Um, we'll we'll just say that, and then we moved on and went down to Arizona um mitch is still down there i was down there for 10 years uh we think we just kind of wanted to get out of the midwest a little bit check something different out um but i don't know like i remember rolling up i think it was that interview day we rented a car and it we must have had a late flight into vegas because i remember getting into the colorado bell which i don't even think is open anymore and, and oh. this just goes to show, like, 
how kind of our mindset has changed and just like we were young and dumb then our our main concern was we were trying to get to Colorado Bell so we could get like a drink we before the bars closed or something like that you know yeah I remember we get to the bar we hustle up we have our bags with us and we go all right when's when's last call and the bartender looks at us he goes never <laughs> And we go, oh, <laughs> but anyway, that just goes to show just like, you know, how we went down to Arizona and not really with, you know, health and fitness on our mind, but at some point it changed, you know? So, um, that kind of goes into, you know, your mindset moving down to Arizona and how it's changed for you. So, um, what has changed, I guess, for you now that you've been down in Arizona for a while and kind of your health journey? Oh, geez. Yeah. My, like you were saying, like our number one priority was kind of just partying and having a good time and just seeing the sights and doing whatever. Like you could just say, hey, we're going here this weekend and we would be going. There were one time where we put, uh, I think for our first spring break, it was like we put a bunch of options in the hat. It was like, hey, we're going to go here. We could go to Flagstaff. We could go to L.A. We could go here. And we ended up going to a Cubs game. And just at the drop of a hat, we were going wherever and doing whatever and partying and eating whatever and fast food. Uh, Whopper Sundays where you get buy one get one free and now I don't, I don't I couldn't tell you the last time I had Burger King last time I had McDonald's was uh, one of my buddies Nick Kepler brought me through and he was like I can't believe I'm going through bringing you through because I was in Chicago and he was like we're, we were going golfing and we hadn't eaten I was starving he was just like so, <laughs> it's kind of just mandatory you got to eat this if you're gonna have anything to eat right. but it, you know it's been it's, it was, that was probably a decade ago. That was eight, nine years ago. And so it's just, yeah, staying away from fast food, eating everything, you know, clean, organic stuff and but just or from a grocery store. Like I don't eat, I don't ever eat fast food. So right. um, it, nutrition that way definitely changed. It's a, it's a priority now and not just kind of like it's I don't it's not like a on the back burner and then, oh, it's time to eat now. Let's think of something like it's planned out. So, so definitely a priority yeah. there. I mean, I guess I don't really know. Maybe you do. Like, what do you remember the time that it changed for you? Like, um, I think you know what it was when I was when I wanted to see results in the gym more, um, and not not physical results. That's never been like, hey, I want to get huge. Hey, I want to do this. Like, we've always been like skinny or called skinny fat because we weren't necessarily strong, but we could, we could, I could run, we could play basketball any time of the week and, 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 you know, and not die. We'd play on Tuesday nights, you know, we did all the rec leagues and things. And we, we played volleyball right when he got down here. And it's just like, that was our extent of it. It wasn't like exerting yourself to the max, like we do in CrossFit or any, you know, anything else or like really competitive as in, um, like I really wanted to lock down my marathon, half marathon, six mar half marathons. It's not like I really wanted to be like, I want to get this under, you know, under 110 and I'm, I'm just going to start dialing in my eating instead. But I think it was more with CrossFit of like if competing and knowing that, okay, that's how I'm going to have to get better. And, and if I want to get even stronger, I'm going to have to like put in way more protein. And right. Yeah. It just kind of started with that. I think with you and Josh, you guys kind of started going down to the tribe because they had free CrossFit classes down there. And I think you guys talked me into it a little bit later you guys got a little head start there. And like for myself, there was just nothing else like it. Like I tried going into Bullhead Health Club. We had tried going on, you know, jogs and stuff and we would run sporadically. But like, it, I think it might have been something where there was a community. It was, you know, we're, we're both former athletes. So there was still that competitiveness in there. Uh, a sense of belonging and stuff. So I think as when you started doing that, I think that's kind of what kind of the turning point for myself, I guess, too. Yeah. And then and getting our level one when we were training. So they go into the zone diet in your CrossFit level one, and they talk about that and just your, your blocks of food. And so it, that's interesting. And then, and, and I tried that at that point. Cause it was like, okay, if I'm going to teach somebody how to do this, like I want to do it to my, I want to do it myself just so I can say, Hey, this is how I felt during that. And so that's where it goes to like, once I started training people, I tried different things. And I know that you and I tried that paleo thing for a while. And, and that's, that's always fun to try just to, I mean, you're, you're clean eating, you know, it's just meat, seeds, some vegetable, you know, or meats, vegetables, some seeds and nuts. And it's like, 
everything is just the nothing, no processed food. So it's just, it, that's kind of, you really have to plan when it comes to that. I was, I was on like the paleo bandwagon, you know, for a long time, because if you think about it, I had the best results with it because I went from doing nothing with my nutrition to actually doing something, you know? And then yeah. now it's like now knowing more about nutrition, I know that you need to fuel your body and you don't have to avoid carbs or, you know, you can eat everything in moderation but that's kind of what kickstarted me. But then now, you know, it's a little bit different. Yeah. And and, and it's simple too. It's not like, right. oh, can I have this or can do I have to measure this? It's like eat, eat as much meat and vegetables as you can. And we like to eat. So it's like, oh, deal. I mean, I can have all of this. It's like, yeah. yeah. So no limit. It, it, it's very, very simple. It, right. Right. There is no limit on it. So that that was what was nice about it for me. The convenience of that but if you were on the go where are you going to get protein on the go you know it's like okay cool at a gas station i've got beef jerky is the only like paleo friendly thing that you can have right yeah gas station is tough but all right man so yeah. that's a little bit about kind of your background your your health journey uh and i guess okay so mitch is the owner ceo of heatwave crossfit down in it's technically fort mojave right it's not yeah, fort, fort mojave, fort mojave. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that has evolved over the years too. Cause when I was first down there, I remember it was CrossFit a six, four, two, six, you know, there was a few other owners, you were a partial owner, just, you know, how has your business evolved in, in the last what, five to seven years? Yeah. So I, when I was, I just started as a trainer and then a year in, I went and visited Josh. You talked about him is Sturgis CrossFit. And it was like, I want to be owner. Like I want to own it. I'm, I've got the buy-in. I want to do it. And so I talked to my, the other owners about doing it and they were like, yeah, here's the, here's the dollar amount. So I bought in and did that. And then with them for, I think four years, I was a co-owner and then I just kind of wanted to take it over. And so I approached both of them and we came up with a, a dollar amount and then I bought that out. And so I've owned it for six years on my own and then rebranded it Heatwave CrossFit. And, uh, I mean, it's just been growing ever since and yeah. I, it's, it's awesome. I love every part of it. Yeah. There. Okay. So I remember like walking into the gym, even just the building itself. Like when you walk in, there's like physical differences that you can tell because there was a rig set up right in the middle, not very many mats really set up or anything. It was really, really bare. Like you're working out in a storage unit basically. Um, but now you have it all done up. So the physical appearance, like, yeah, there's changes there, but like, how about programming? Has, did the programming change ever? Like, what are you guys doing as far as that goes? When it came to that, we we really programmed about, <laughs> we, we switched trainers. It was like you, we, one week, me, the other week. And it was constantly varied functional fitness where you do kind of the three days off, one day on. And um, what we ended up doing, like when I, and then, and then I programmed and I didn't really have the long-term goal on our programming, like to see different things. And so now what happened was um, I, my daughter's four years old. And when I was about to have, when I was about to have her, when my wife was about to have her, I realized that it was, that's what I spent my Sundays on. So it was just kind of like programming and doing all that. And I was like, I need to find something different. So I, that's when I outsourced the programming and we've been with NC fit ever since. And so for the past four years, four and a half years, we've been with NC fit and it's, and it's been awesome. Like I haven't had any complaint. I haven't had any complaints and I mean, I love it. And that's the programming that I use. They have a competitor's port programming to it. They have a, a flex, which is like a bodybuilding portion to it. And so it's, it, it kind of a wide range of different, uh, I don't know, different programming for it. Right. They have, yeah. At home. I think they came out with that during COVID. Like you can yeah. actually, you know, assign a workout for somebody at home. Um, but yeah, for other people that don't know, you know, you guys are heat wave, we're cold front. Um, I think it all, we follow your programming, you know, we, we do NC fit with you guys, you know, and, and we do one of those many programs that they have. Uh, we may not be always doing the same thing all the time, but I think that actually started like with one of your members, like you had told them that, you know, MJ was doing some classes out of his garage in South Dakota and somebody I think had mentioned, well, they should just be cold front, you know? And I go, that's kind of nice. And we just kind of rolled with it. ever since. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, 
You know? yeah. I, I remember talking to you about when we were going to rebrand on what we were going to do. And you were like, it's got to be heat because you could use a wall ball like heat by like the Miami heat. And I'm like, yeah. all right, let's think of something heat, man. Have <laughs> I still a, haven't have done a shirt that. like that yet. No, I haven't done a shirt like Miami heat, but I need yes. to, man. Yes. Yeah. That's got to be your, your next right. T-shirt. I think that's going to be hot. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. So what's next? Uh, as far as, you know, your business goes and everything, uh, do you have anything on the horizon? Um, at well, all? Then, I, you know what? It, um, eventually I want to get into my own building. I have a piece of land that I'm always saying I'm going to build on, I'm going to build on. And I just haven't, you know, taken those steps to get that done. Um, I'm dabbling into more, a little bit of personal training. I've got a few clients. I think I've got like seven clients. I've got three in person and then a couple online. And I, I, I do, I really like, I like the in-person ones, you know, my personal clients, they're awesome, you know, and just seeing their growth. It's, it's just another challenge. And I, I really enjoy it. I didn't. And when I first started, I did not like doing it. Uh, I remember Christina talking about one of my other co-owners talking about, hey, I've got some other clients. Would you like to do this? And I'm like, no, I, I really don't. And then now that I don't really have a ton of time, I, <laughs> I'd rather not rather do that. But I, I, I do enjoy doing it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And I guess, uh, you know, I've been obviously shifting my business as well too, just doing more of that individual type stuff. And um, I know that, are you doing any coaching there at Needles currently? Like no, any... they, 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 I don't think, I don't even think they had a cross country coach at the beginning of the year. And the athletic director asked me last year in baseball season. And I'm like, no, man, I don't, I don't want, I, I, I would love it. I really would. But after school, I go home and see my kids and that's what I get wow. right, right off the bat. If I, if I don't go get a workout right off the bat, I go, I go get to see my kids. Cause it's just, yeah. I, I coach the 5 a.m. and then I have a personal client at 6 a.m. And then from there I go right to school. And so I, I mean, I see, I leave at 4.30 a.m. And so I don't see my daughter. She's sleeping, of course. And I don't, I don't see him until four after school. And so it's like, I don't want to wait until six and then finally. So yeah. I, I said, no, so kind of <laughs> kind of where it. I was getting with that is like, that's kind of the fun thing with what we do is, you know, you get the people that, want to work with you like people come to you and you know they you know where some of the high school athletics and stuff you know you get what you get and some of the kids are tough to respond to because they don't maybe don't want to be there you know for that day where you know when you have clients coming in you know they want you to coach them hard for the most part right for sure these guys are paying you for your knowledge and then right, right. now it's like the, the coaching stipends, you know, they're not, it's, they're not huge. And so it's just kind of like, oh, and now you've got these kids that their parents are making them or they just, you know, or they're just doing it because their buddy's there and you know, they're, it, it's, it is, it's tough. Very, very tough. Oh. All right. Um, but you did do some coaching. I saw you coach basketball. You coached uh, Wilder's oh kindergarten team. Yes. Okay. I, I, this, there was another teacher at the school that coached too. And she was like, how do your kids know all this and do this? I was like, we practice every Sunday. <laughs> so I had these four-year-olds going in the gym and I didn't realize that other, you know, other team practices and I'm just ripping drills with them. And uh, one of them was they were, they weren't even, they can't even really dribble. And so they're like, run, I have them in two lanes and I have them both run down there and then jump, stop and bounce past to the other one. And Alex's like, they don't get this. They don't. I was like, yeah, but I'm I'm planting the seed, man. They're going yeah, to, and it's gonna they they're will. gonna develop here one of these days. Yeah, right. That's I was like, like they might as well just try it. I was doing uh, cold front hoopers for you know the little kids like uh, kindergarten and younger, and same type of thing. Like the first day that I started doing those drills, it was like, oh my gosh, I was just like, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> and then the next day, it was like, all right, it was a little bit better. 